I've been waiting for the Raspberry Pi Foundation to do this for a little while now, but uh, today I've got the Raspberry Pi 400 to have a look at. So let me give you my initial thoughts on this interesting new computer. I hope you can excuse a slightly cumbersome microphone setup today. Uh, we're just about to go into lockdown in the UK, so my weekly podcast with Pete will be done remotely. Uh, so I've got the podcasting microphone at home. I thought I may as well use it for this particular video. Uh, and this is all about the Raspberry Pi 400. And I knew nothing about this computer until a few days ago. Uh, I just happened to see a couple of snippets about it on the web and I immediately went and bought one. Uh, and let me tell you why. I've used Raspberry Pis ever since they were first released and I found them to be really interesting devices to play around with. Um, I've made them into web servers, print servers, local network storage devices, all sorts of different things. And uh, it's been good fun playing with them. Uh, but something that always irritates me about them is the fact that they've got the ports on various different sides of the board. So you always end up with this kind of spider's nest of uh, cables coming out of this little board. Uh, it's never been a really neat solution. And I always thought, why not make it into a keyboard case? And uh, finally, they've done it. This is actually a Raspberry Pi 4 uh, with four gigs of RAM, but they've changed the design of the PCB so that it'll fit in this keyboard case and so that all of the ports run off the back of the, the case here. Uh, it's basically the same board with the same CPU, although there is a slight step change in the model number and they've overclocked it. So it's running at uh, 1.8 gigahertz instead of 1.5. Uh, they've been able to do this because inside the case there's a large metal heat sink to help with cooling. And you see uh, perhaps, I don't know if you can see that on the, the camera there, but we've got some vents here as well. There's no fan inside the case, um, but it does run cooler than the Raspberry Pi 4 from all of the examples I've seen, despite being overclocked a bit. So let me just uh, give you a quick run through the ports on the back. You've still got the 40 pin GPIO, although you'd have to probably use uh, an extension cable to get the most out of that. Uh, then you've got a micro SD slot here on the back and it comes with a 16 gigabyte card, which is a um, SanDisk Edge, which is an A1 card. Not the fastest card in the world, but um, I'll be changing that anyway. It's still got the same two tiny HDMI ports. Uh, I think they should have taken this opportunity to make at least one of them a full size HDMI port. Uh, this has got to be the worst connector ever for video. Um, it will apparently drive two displays and it will run at 4K. And I've been running it on my 4K monitor behind, but the included cable is only sufficient to run it at 30 hertz. Uh, so you'd need a different cable to run it at 60 hertz, which I believe is possible. Uh, you've then got a USB-C port, which is for charging only. I got the kit version of this, which comes with the charger, with a mouse, with the cable, everything you need, basically. Uh, I haven't actually used the charger yet because my monitor has a USB-C attachment. Uh, unfortunately, of course, the Raspberry Pi doesn't output video through this particular port. Uh, that would have been a really neat solution to just have a one cable plug in to a monitor like my, my Dell here. We've then got uh, two USB 3 ports, one USB 2 port. Uh, the other USB 2 port, I think, is reused internally for the, for the keyboard. Obviously, if you bought the standard uh, Raspberry Pi 4, you get two of each of those ports. And there is an ethernet port as well. Uh, I don't know what speed that is. I assume that's a, a one gigabit port. There's no activity lights on it. I mean, everything on this is built to a, a budget. Uh, I think it was uh, 97 pounds and I'll put the equivalent US dollars price on screen for the kit version. You can get just the keyboard on its own if you don't want the mouse and the other bits, but I think it's nice to spend a little bit extra to get the kit version because you get a manual in the box. Do you remember the days when computers used to come with a manual? Uh, and this is a really interesting manual that actually takes you through the features of the computer, some basic programming. I think that fits really well with the purpose of the Raspberry Pi as well. I mean, it's designed as, a, as an educational tool, isn't it? So you want to get a manual in the box. Uh, so when it comes to the device itself, it's obviously got the nice uh, raspberry color. I hope that's coming through loud and clear on the video. Sort of almost red, but with a hint of pink to it. I think it looks great. Very raspberry-like and a uh, nice white finish to the keyboard. It, it's uh, heavier than you might expect, um, so it doesn't slide around on the desk. It feels pretty solid. It doesn't, doesn't flex massively. Uh, the keyboard is not the greatest typing experience, but what do you expect for £97? You know, these computers are built to a price point. Uh, they're supposed to be accessible, low-cost computers, and I think it fits the brief very well. I think what they've done for the price that you pay is magnificent, frankly. I'll just show you the mouse that you get with the kit as well, and it's uh, in the matching color. 
It's an optical mouse, uh, unfortunately with a USB cable. I'd have preferred a wireless mouse. I wish they did that as an option. Um, but it's a nice enough little cheap mouse. It's uh, got three buttons. So this scroll wheel acts as the middle button. And that's going to be important for anybody that wants to run Risk OS on their Raspberry Pi, uh, which I do, of course. So uh, I don't need to go out and buy another three button mouse for that. With the kit, you also get an HDMI cable with uh, a full size HDMI plug at one end and the, is it micro HDMI at the other? Uh, anyway, it's not a very long cable. And again, I come back to that. Why didn't they put a full size port on? That would have been much easier for me. Um, so I don't have to get behind the monitor and unplug cables and swap things around. But it's nice that you've got it. Uh, obviously, if you're going to use this with your TV or something, you'll probably find this isn't long enough to sit in front of your TV. So you're probably going to end up on Amazon buying another version of this cable. Um, and presumably you can get a better quality one that will, will run a 4K screen at 60 hertz as well. I'm sure that is possible. Uh, when it comes to the power supply, it's a, a captive cable, USB-C at one end and uh, a branded plug at the other. Um, there's nothing special about this. I'm not going to personally use it. I've got enough USB-C chargers around, but it's nice to have as a backup. Now the SD card that it comes with is pre-installed with the Raspberry Pi operating system, all pretty standard stuff. Just uh, plug in the power. Uh, there's no power switch on the device. It just uh, switches on straight away. Uh, you do have some LED lights. So you've got a power light, uh, which actually doubles up as an activity light. So it will flash when things are happening. Uh, then you've also got uh, the caps lock light and there's a number lock as well. So there is within these keys a, a number pad that you can use. I think it's a really neat solution. It's very small kind of thing you could chuck in a bag. I'm pretty sure that someone's going to be selling cases for these things so that you can take it around and have coding adventures with your friends. The Raspberry Pi operating system comes with some programming languages pre-installed. You've got Python on there and various versions of Scratch as well to play around with. Um, but of course, you're not limited to Raspberry Pi OS. There are other versions of Linux that are designed to run on ARM and you can obviously you know, put those onto a separate SD card. Uh, that's what I quite like about the SD card approach. It allows you to have multiple different operating systems on different cards. Uh, so very quickly you can uh, boot your machine up into something else. Now for me, that something else will be Risk OS. So this is the operating system that originally came with British Acorn computers, the originators of ARM. Uh, and I'm quite keen to try that out. Uh, and there's uh, an open source version, Risk OS Open, which you can install here on your Raspberry Pi with fairly minimal fuss. Uh, so my plan is just to get a, a slightly faster SD card out of my collection and set up Risk OS, and I'll have a play around with that. I'll keep the Pi OS installed as it is. It'll be a useful uh, little hacking keyboard for um, connecting up to web servers and that sort of thing. Um, something interesting to play with, really. One of the things that gets me so excited about this type of computer is the, the keyboard case computer. Uh, that was something that I grew up with. You know, you think about the likes of the Commodore 64, the BBC Micro, and then later, you know, you had the Amiga and finally sort of the Amiga 1200s and the Acorn 3000 series. Uh, these are iconic machines f that mean a lot to me. Uh, they're part of my computing history. And I really like the idea of having a computer contained within a, a keyboard case. I don't understand why that idea died out. I think it's a, a nice idea. And I'm really pleased that the Raspberry Pi Foundation has done this. It's a lot smaller, of course, than those vintage machines, but it's got way more power inside it. I mean, you couldn't even conceive of a computer this powerful back in the 90s. Uh, that said, by today's standards, this is not a powerful computer. Don't go rushing out to buy one of these thinking it's going to give you some amazing experience. Yes, it's a quad core ARM CPU running at 1.8 gigahertz and it's got four gigs of RAM in it. But that doesn't mean very much, really, uh, compared to your iPhone or your Android phone. Uh, this isn't a very powerful ARM CPU. With the Raspberry Pi OS, you've got LibreOffice already installed, which is a Microsoft Office compatible system or suite of applications. So you can do your word processing, your spreadsheeting, uh, your email, your web browsing, your content consumption. Yeah, this device can do all of that. Uh, it's even got onboard hardware encoding and decoding for modern video codecs. So all in all, I think many people in the education environment or within a basic office environment could actually use one of these as their main computer, and it would be perfectly adequate for that purpose. The eagle-eyed among you will have spotted that there's no audio input and output. That would have to be catered for via USB, although of course there is audio output over HDMI, so yeah, you do get sound for watching videos and listening to music. In addition to that, you've also got Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on board as well. Uh, all in a computer that costs less than £100 in a complete kit. 
And again, I, I really like that idea of the boxed kit. You get everything you need and uh, it is as simple as plugging it in to the TV and switching it on and off you go. Remember the old days when computing was that simple? Okay, fair enough. Once you've got it set up, it will download a whole bunch of updates, uh, which does take a little while, but that's, uh, that's modern computing for you, I guess. So I haven't had much time to play with it yet. I've had it less than 24 hours, so I'm going to do some separate videos about that. Of course, there's lots of excitement coming with next week's uh, Apple Silicon announcement, so um, those videos will come, but I'm not sure exactly when. Uh, but I'm looking forward to playing around with this uh, Pi 400 and particularly playing around with Risk OS again for the first time in a very long time. Um, and I'd like to bring some content on that to the channel, so I'll do that. Uh, I hope Raspberry Pi Foundation keep doing this kind of thing. Uh, how about a Raspberry Pi 800? Or how about a Raspberry Pi that isn't built to a particular cost? I think a lot of people would be interested in an ARM computer like this with a bit more power under the hood and possibly finished to a more premium standard as well. And we'd be happy to pay for it. Something else I'd like to try is emulating some of those older systems, which is possible with the Raspberry Pi, uh, perhaps even getting some retro gaming done. Uh, and if I manage to achieve any of that, of course, I'll bring the content to the channel. Uh, so that's just a quick overview of the Raspberry Pi 400. Uh, hopefully you found that interesting. If you enjoyed the content, please consider subscribing to the channel and maybe I did enough to earn a thumbs up. In any case, see you next time for some more geekery.